Om Song Saraswati Namaha. Namaste. Namaste, everyone. Tonight, we're going to discuss the ceremony of Pumshaban. And Pumsh has many levels of meaning. Uh, one meaning is the lips. And another meaning is a male child. Uh, it's the root of Purush. But it also means any child. And in this ceremony, Pumshvan means the quickening of the fetus. It also, it means a fetus. And a fetus, uh, the, the first moment that we know that there's another being inside, there's a, a ceremony. There's a puja. And there, there, it's an opportunity to worship. It's an opportunity to remember God. And if we want to communicate to that fetus all that is divine, all that is good, all even while it's just quickening in the womb, we realize that there's been a union and, and the embryo has formed. As soon as that recognition comes to us, we perform worship. Okay, uh, and so at the first sign when the fetus has come, and again, in the second and in the third months, on an appropriate day, and that could be any day, we, uh, we choose Shukla uh, Paksha for all ceremonies of uh, auspiciousness. So in the bright fortnight, and amongst the days of the bright fortnight, Ashtamam Cha Chaturdasham Navamam Chekadasham Cha uh, that's Ash, Ashtami, the eighth day. Uh, uh, Chaturdashi, the ninth day. Navami, the, uh, uh, Navami, the ninth day. Chaturdashi is the fourteenth day. Ekadash, Ekadashi is the, the eleventh day. And Anpurnima, those days are most auspicious of all the auspicious days. Now, anytime if you have a celebration goal like Navaratri, if you have a special uh, uh, Ganga, Ganga Dashara, uh, if you have a special festival day, that could be an auspicious day too. But generally, Ashtami, Navami, Ekadashi, uh, uh, Chaturdasi, and Purnima, those five days amongst the fortnight, are considered the most auspicious for celebrations or ceremonies uh, regarding the sanskaras or the, the, the rites of passage for the family. So after completing your nitya karma, now remember all of this goes on after you've completed uh, your sankalpa, which is your daily sankalpa, your daily worship. That could be, uh, well, in the Devi Mandir, for example, we do the Samasti Upasha, the Cosmic Puja, every day. And then we do the Chandi Pat every day. Now, if that's your uh, sankalpa, you'll do the Cosmic Puja or whatever puja you normally do and whatever pot you normally do. And then you perform, uh, uh, you'll complete all of the sanskars and uh, uh, you perform Matrika Puja. That's part of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Cosmic Puja. The 16 uh, uh, Ganesha Adi Sharasha Matrika. The 16 forms of the Divine Mother. Uh, and the Vridha Shrad and Tarpon. Now we have the Shrad and Tarpon Vidi, it's on our website. Uh, and we perform the Shrad, which is for, for all the ancestors that have, uh, have preceded us. We want to invite them to be part of this ceremony too. And then we do the Tarpon, Devangs Tarpayami, Rishings Tarpayami, Vitrings Tarpayami. And, and both the husband and wife should fast for the day. Uh, that is, uh, from morning to evening, you'll take the food after, uh, you'll break the fast after the evening worship is complete. Now then, in the evening, both the husband and wife should take a bath and wearing new cloth. And now realize, please realize that 
In every one of these pujas, the wife gets a new sari, or she gets a new cloth, whatever that may be. Um, in some of them, the husband gets one too. So uh, you'll uh, bathe your wife and give her a new sari or a new cloth because she is to be treated like the goddess. She is to be worshipped. She is to give her a progenitor of a uh, progenitress of life. And so she's going to be given the opportunity to be worshipped and to join in the worship. Uh, we, we've turned around, we, said we, we did all our nitya karma, all our daily practices, and then we turned around to our ancestors and said, hey guys, we're going to do something very, very special. We want you to join us in giving blessings. I want to bless seven generations previous to us for giving us this knowledge and we want to pass that blessing on to seven generations to come and, and we'll all share in that knowledge. And then in the evening we bathe, give the wife a new cloth and perform the standard sandhya practices, whatever your sandhya consists of. It may, whatever your evening practice is. It may be puja, it may be japa, it may be homa, it may be arati, it may be all of the above. And you perform your regular pujas in the morning plus the shrad and tarpan and you uh, pr perform the, the, the regular pujas in the evening. And then you perform achvan, take the sankalpa, the shanti, shwashti, vashtan, uh, you are the sankalpa shukta, you all know how to perform a sankalpa. Or if not, you can choose the puja that you want to study. Uh, we've got, we've already gone through the classes on how do you do the achvan, take the sankalpa, and it, it will be puja karma maham, pumshabam, Bratam Maham Karishye uh, will be the Sankalpa. You do Shanti Swasti Vachan, your Sankalpa Shukta, and both f f sitting facing east, you'll repeat the mantras that say, Om Hiranya Garba Samavarta Dagre Bhutasya Jata Patirika Asi Sadavavya Pritaming Yad Mute Man. Kasmai de baya avisha vidde ma Oma bhyaha sambhuta ha priti bhyakir Asacha vishwa karmanaka samabharta tagre Tashya tvashta vidata dudme iti Tamasya tanyasya devatama jana magre and th these are worship of the sun. You you are the the the, the golden womb. Uh, you are coming to, to illuminate all that all that has taken birth on the earth. Uh, every day you come in its course, and uh, we are you awakened all the members of the earth uh, to uh, uh, to their activities. How please shine upon our child. Now the husband will put a kailash of water in the lap of the wife. Uh, this is, a, a, it could be a bowl of water, it could be a kailash of water, and then performing uh, obishek uh, from the bowl. He will be obishek to his wife and gi gi give her swasti and shanti. And we bless you with peace on the earth and peace in the atmosphere, peace upwards, over, on all sides and further, peace, peace, peace. And then he'll give her a flower, he'll give her dakshina, and he'll give her a blessing. Sri Bhachaswam Ayushyam Arogyam Abhidatpavamadam Mekiyate Danandanyam Pashum pahut putrang lavan, shatta sambataram dirgamayu. I bless you with the highest respect, especially coming from me, your husband. And health and wisdom and light and joy and peace for yourself and your children and your children's children to the seventh generation. And then he bows down to her. Now, this is done the moment 
that she's discovered in pregnancy, that the garb the, has uh, the quickened, uh, that the pumsh, uh, the established uh, of the fetus has taken place again in the second month, again in the third month. So please remember, nine months of pregnancy, you get nine special pujas. Uh, like the nine flowers that we gave in the beginning, we're going to have nine special pujas, and we're going to give blessings of respect, and blessings of wisdom, and blessings of peace, and treat that goddess with the greatest gentility, and slowly, slowly, she will decrease her necessity to be active in the world. She, we reduce her physical chores as she, she becomes more and more, as the, the child within her becomes more and more uh, uh, demanding of her energy. We reduce her necessity to act outside and keep her inside. So I'd like to share with you that when Sita conceived love and Kush with Ram in Ayodhya, all the rishis from all over India immediately got notice. They all knew. And they immediately congregated in Ayodhya. All of them, from north, south, east, and west. The greatest rishis of that time all came to Ayodhya. And they wanted especially to share the principles of Dharma, just as we're doing this in this exercise, in this discussion. Uh, we're sharing the principles of Dharma. And so that they could not only share with Sita and Ram and the whole kingdom, but the newborn child in her womb uh, would get the benefit of the satsang as well. So the question was raised, how is it that uh, just listening to the discourse or the learned discourse of the, of the great rishis, uh, uh, how could that illuminate the soul? I mean, the soul is within. I, 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 we're only hearing outside. And especially, how could it change the life of a fetus growing in the womb? And the answer was given just as when you sit in the sun. The sun's rays don't only warm your body, but they warm your heart as well. They illuminate your soul. Close your eyes and look at the sun and you'll see a bright illumination. Just as you feel the illumination of the sun inside and out, in the same way, the child in the womb gets the benefit inside and out, and the mother gets the benefit inside and out, so that it, it, or the inspiration and the illumination and the principles of Dharma uh, affect the, the entire family. That radiance becomes uh, imbued within the fetus in the womb. Just as when Prahlad was in Kayadu's womb, sitting in Narad Muni's ashram, and he heard Narad Muni making japa, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. In the same way, he came out of the womb, only loving Vishnu. His love for God, he was the son of the Ashura king. And yet his love for God was so strong, so intense, so dynamic, that even his father had to give up his exuric ways because of the devotion of his son. So in the same way, we want to, as soon as we know that we have an embryo growing, that being, that soul, is, we want to illuminate that soul with the light of wisdom, with the inspiration of devotion, with knowledge, make him strong. Now, uh, it, this is called the ceremony of Pumsarpan. And we 
give blessings to the wife, we take blessings from the wife. And then we proceed uh, to uh, 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 bow down to her and worship her as a goddess. Take her blessing, give her our blessing, and the whole family grows strong in blessing each other. Now, if it's possible and you have enough time, you have enough mind, you invite the guru to give blessings. If it's possible and you have enough time and you have enough mind, you invite all the other members of the immediate family and they can participate too. If they are of a mind to participate. If they want to make a social festival out of a spiritual exercise, then don't, no need to invite others. But as wide as is your spiritual circle, so many individuals do you want to, to share the joy of conception. Because all of them can add, they have the potential, they have the capa capacity, they have the possibility of adding spiritual energy to the in amplification and the embellishment of, of the fetus in the womb. And this is the first of the prenatal ceremonies. Let's move on now to Simanta Nayana. Uh, and Samantanayan is a, a, a parting of the hairs. It's, it's, it's making a, a sita, a, a, a part in the hair, and placing simant. A simant is another name for shindur. And they, you put the shindur in the hairs. So it could be in the sixth month or the eighth month or both. We've got one, two, and three. You could have a sadbakshan in fourth, and we'll talk about that as one aspect. And in the sixth and eighth month, we'll do this Simantanayan on an appropriate day. We just discussed that. Uh, that's uh, in the Shukla Paksha, the bright fortnight. Uh, the husband will complete his bath and then help the wife to bathe. Because she's getting a little big. Uh, she may need someone to hold a towel for her. Facing east with his wife on his left side, the husband and wife should wear yellow cloths. <laughs> hey, hey, she's all ready. Mother, what's that underneath your cloth? <laughs> and perform matrika puja and the vridha shrad and tarpan, etc. And now we perform achman, vishnu dhyan, and vishnu stotra. So, I mean, there are many stotrams that uh, you know, we can uh, recite for Vishnu. Uh, I have one here. Namaste Pundari Kakshan Bhatanama Bhayankara Sanatatma Sarvatma Bhutatma Bhutta Bhavana Hey, uh, I'm bowing down to Vishnu, to Pundari Kakshan. Kakshan is the, is the eyes who, who, who see the everything in the universe. Uh, the, the name uh, which uh, all devotees love to recite. He is the eternal soul. He is the soul of all. He is the uh, the soul of all existent. And Bhutta Bhavana, he is the attitude of all existence. Uh, that Lord Vishnu. And he should sing his Mangalachar, the Shanti Shwasti Vachan Shanta Dyal, Santa Prithivi, Santa Amida, Hervantaringa, Rikshan. There's peace in the heavens and peace on the earth and peace upwards over and all sides and further. And in Shwasti Swasti, being is my own. I, I am, let us realize the imperishable truth. I bless you with the, the ultimate wealth of being will be your own. You are the master of your destiny. Uh, Achman, seat the wife on his left side. He should invite Agni into the home Akund in front of him. And we all remember that there's the, the video we did on how to establish the, and kindle the, the divine fire and light, uh, worship the yantra. Mixing with ghee and honey, he should offer a supari three times. Om Prajapatake Tvajustam Kreen Hami. 
स्वाहा ओम प्रजापताये त्वां जुष्टां निपापायामि स्वाहा ओम प्रजापताये त्वां जुष्टां प्रोक्षायामि स्वाहा And then, I, it, it means I, I, I invite you, I, I bow to you, and I'm worshiping you. Agni Thwam Mangalam Dham Asi Yum Agni are the embodiment of welfare. And now we're going to pre, uh, prepare the puja, we're going to perform the puja. Oh, and then... Uh, we're going to uh, 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 do the, in the midst of making the puja, we're going to per, uh, prepare the pancha amritam. Remember, payo dadi gritam cheva maducha shakrayutam pancha amritam bhaikadatam grihanitvam sureshwari paya milk. It stands for the purity of infinite consciousness. The, the uh, means uh, yogurt. It stands for the uh, congealed consciousness, manifested consciousness. Grit means ghee, which stands for the illumination of consciousness. Mwadu means honey, and shakar means sugar. And these are the, uh, the five nectars we're going to prepare, the nourishment and sweetness of illumination of the manifestation of infinite consciousness in personalized form and that's what we're going to feed to the spouse and uh, we, uh, we make home a Vishnu we can make the Vishnu Sahasranam we could make a thousand names of Vishnu. We could make a thousand names on the Mo Basu De Basu De Bhagavad De Basu Devaya. We could make uh, in many different ways. Uh, we can perform the 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 Homa of Vishnu, and then Om Prajapataye Swaha Idam Prajapataye Namaha. Now I'm bowing to the the Pati of all the Praja the Lord of all beings born. And then the husband parts the wife's hair and offer, offers sindur three times. Uh, and he, oftentimes he takes a golden ring and rolls it through the partner hair and he says, Ombur binayami, Ombuval binayami, Omswa binayami. And he offers food, and then, uh, uh, you know, Shatapatra Sudha Sulavir, Vividane Kabakshanam. We're offering food, a regular uh, food offering. Sarvabhadra Mandala Homa, Om Brahmane Swaha, Om Somaya Swaha. And, and then we do the Purnahuti, Dakshina, and He's got to give his wife some dakshina. And then, because she's the object of his worship, the object of his reverence, and then he makes the sadbakshan. This is, he gives her the chara namra to, to drink. And she is drinking the purity of the illumination, the nourishment and sweetness of the illumination of manifested consciousness. And that's what stands, uh, that's what's symbolized in the offering of the Panchamrit. Uh, he gives her Dakshina, Shanti, Pranam, Tilak, and Ashirvad, blessings. And this is the Shimantanayan. And this can be performed in the sixth month or in the eighth month or in the sixth, seventh, and eighth months. Uh, you can perform this uh, uh, Sad Bhakshan and uh, Simantanayan. Let's see if there are any questions. Nanda? Yes, please. Immediately upon the discovery of uh, the quickening of the fetus, one day a woman knows. She says, I'm pregnant. And then, uh, 
yeah, after that time, this, in the second month and in the third month. Those three times. Nanda? Namaste, Rami, Mommy. Well, it's also done, uh, 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 the orgya uh, was offered with the nine pushpas, nine flowers uh, from the Kali Puja. In the beginning of the Garbhadan Vidhi at Kali Puja, you have a special Nava Pushpa Chorgyam Grihani Thwang Dibakara. You offer nine flowers every day until you get pregnant. Nanda? Well, they should definitely want to do the, the, uh, uh, the cosmic puja if they can. They definitely want to do the chandi pot if they can. And then they should do as much job as they possibly can. Of course, the mool mantra will be Gayatri. Om bur the gross body, subtle body, and causal body. Tat means that. Savitur is the light of the sun, the light of the wisdom, the light of the warmth of devotion. Varenyam, the most high, the, the best, shreshd. Varenyam uh, bargo devasya, the, 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 of the gods, the wealth of the gods, the highest wealth of the gods, the light of wisdom, uh, which is the highest wealth of the gods. The Maki, we contemplate, we meditate upon that light of wisdom, which is the highest wealth of the gods. The Oyona give to us Pracho Udoya, Pracho Doyat. You continuously make it grow, make it rise. That light of wisdom, which is the highest wealth of the gods. We're meditating upon that and we're praying that you continually make it grow and rise higher and brighter and lighter in our lives. There is no time in our lives when we won't be appreciative of more, greater wisdom. There's no time when we can say, I don't need wisdom here. It's the Mool Mantra of the Sanatan Dharma means it's the root teaching of the highest ideal of perfection that there is no time in our lives when we can't benefit from using greater wisdom. And that's why it's the basis of the uh, eternal ideal of perfection. So you can make a, a job of Gayatri, you can make job of the Mool Mantra, uh, or your Guru Mantra, or the Mool Mantra of Chandi, or the Mool Mantra of Durga, or Om Namah Shivai. All of these will be beneficial to you. Oh, 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 oh you can make uh, be, uh, be, the Japa of Vishnu's Mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevai. As much as you can do puja, pot, and job. So much. The mother will grow. The father will grow. The child will grow. It is in the best interest in, to benefit everyone by continuing this job. Nanda? Namaste, Bharati Ma. She does both. Uh, so she will do, but at her own chando, her own rhythm. She will fulfill all of her obligations as she is required by circumstances. Uh, I saw some women who gave birth in the morning and went to work in the afternoon. Uh, there are different circumstances and different customs in every tradition, in every environment. So she will do what she needs to do, but with the caveat that she stops from time to time and gets quiet inside. 
She doesn't have to do it all hurriedly in a rush and keep uh, uh, with lots of tension and pressure. She could do according to her own rhythm. Nanda? Absolutely, all of these things will be very, very beneficial. We have created a number of CDs of Mother's beautiful, melodic, quiet, peaceful mantras, which can just play in the background and serve to calm the entire environment. Just tone down the level, just turn the decibels down, even take a, a dim the bright lights and it quieten the loud noises, so that we all have a tendency to speak peacefully, respectfully, in great uh, sincerity and earnestness of communication. We don't want anyone to get upset. It's hard enough as it is without our becoming the cause of greater discomfort. Nanda? Well, certainly a spiritual child will be one who is raised in a spiritual environment. So as soon as the child enters the womb, uh, you want to listen to as much spiritual knowledge as you possibly can. You want to contemplate as much spiritual inspiration as you possibly can. You want to study the lives of the saints and the rishis and read the scriptures and talk about dharma. Talk about the highest ideals of perfection. Keep your mind far away from the nonsense of the worldliness. Uh, you do not want to uh, play soccer or exert yourself to in, uh, in ways that won't be conducive to your, your being uh, 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 in the bob, in the attitude of peace and love and generosity, loving God, and feeling comfort in every, or surrounded by comfort. You probably don't want to watch violent movies or television that, that uh, explaining the latest terrorist bombings and that. And it just keep away from the stuff of worldliness as much as you can and move into the Sanatan Dharma, the eternal ideals of perfection. That would be the best place, the most comforting place for us to remain. Nanda? Namaste, morning sun. If the parents are not inclined to perform sadhana and these methods to worship, what can other family members do to support the child while still in utero? Well, if the mother and father are not interested, it's very difficult for outsiders to have a great influence. The parents will have the greater influence and in what they do is, and the environment that they create for the child is going to have more prabhav, more uh, influence in the life of the child than people who visit for one hour every now and then. However, when you're with the newborn child or with the child in the womb, you want to, as much as you can, do japa speak softly, speak with love, speak about inspiration, and try to get the mother into the above, into the attitude of peace and love and joy. Communicate that to the fetus in the womb. Nanda? This is from Devi from Georgia. Namaste Devi Ma. Oh, she should try to offer all the food that she is going to take at the altar where she's uh, 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 worshipping. Uh, 
And she should try to make, uh, bring God into the food and bring the food into herself and bring that nourishment into her fetus. And she should try to, uh, to eat those foods which are conducive to uh, the, the, the child's growth and development in the most spiritual way. If she can, if she can subsist on a vegetarian diet, uh, that will be very healthy for the child. Uh, if she can, uh, uh, in any way she can bring sattvic nourishment to the child, she should. Certainly, at the bare minimum, she will want to offer the, a blessing, Brahmarpanam, Brahmahapir, before eating anything. But if you can cook it yourself, it's even better. If you can cook it yourself and offer it in your altar, it's even better. If you could grow the, your own food, cook it yourself and offer it at the altar and then offer it at the table, then it's even better. Because then you control the attitude, the bhava, the, 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 the inputs that are going into the mother, which are going into the fetus, which are going to manifest into this new life. We want to give that child every opportunity to be as pure and clear and, and defined as possible. Nanda? <laughs> Namaste, Amika. Ambika, it will be more appropriate to, to speak the mantras out loud. But the most important thing is to keep mother's mind in mantra. Mantrayate iti mantra, that which takes away the mind. So as much as we can keep mother's mind in mantra, it stops wandering here and there. Now, when you speak the mantra softly or silently or repeat it or merely think about it or use the pumsh, uh, 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 mode of ucharan, uh, where, where you're just moving your lips, that comes out. Where it, and it's inaudible to anyone else, uh, then it, that, that's a, a totally a possibility uh, as long as you keep your mind there. When the mind starts to stray, then let's go back and, and start getting louder and louder and louder and tell the person who is the being within this ashram begins to listen to the mantra. Once again, we have to wake up the person who lives in this ashram so that she can really understand the mantra and communicate the mantra and actually grok the mantra, uh, 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 consciousness is awakened, an awareness to the mantra. Nanda? <laughs> Namaste Nilima. We have to realize, Nilima, all the time that these children are loan to us. They have their own karma, their own sanskaras, their own destinies that to, they will have, require to fulfill. And therefore, uh, it, it, we, we are the chokidar. We, we are merely the guardian. And once that child, as it develops into the being that we try to influence to the best of our capacity, it, it, then we have to stand back and become a witness. Of course, while the child is in the womb, we're going to give all the best things that we can possibly give and influence that child's growth and development in the most positive ways uh, 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 that are attainable. 
But once we have uh, given them forth that influence, uh, we have just a few years of uh, growth before that child is, is, is de developing into a mind of its own. And at that point, we're going to have to slowly recede from the picture and empower the child to make decisions for herself. So that's, that's generally uh, the, the progression. Uh, there is definitely a time when the children are grown and independent where we become friends and uh, advisors rather than uh, parents who can dictate the answers to their dilemmas of life. We don't want to do that. We want to empower the children to make the right decisions based on the examples that they're seeing with us in our in the parents' behavior. Nanda? Ambika, it will be impossible for you to pay attention to one mantra for long periods of time. As soon as we lose concentration of that one mantra, don't give up our meditation. Instead, switch to another mantra. So say you can do 10 malas of one mantra, and then you start drifting off into reverie, or daydreaming, or going to the movies, we call it. Well, instead of going to the movies quickly, uh, completely, or getting up and giving up your, your spiritual is, uh, exercise, switch to another mantra, or do the puja, or read a text of mantras, like the whole Chandipat constitutes one mantra. If you recite the Chandi, which is comprised of 700 mantras, the whole pot it, it means one mantra that you fixed your mind into the drama of putting too much and too little into balance, cutting down self-conceit and self-deprecation with the sword of wisdom, surrendering the great ego at the feet of the mother and moving into union, into yoga, into chitta vritti nirod. And that is the chandi pot has one way, one method of taking away your mind. So if you lose concentration, then switch mantras. Don't switch practices. This practice is the same. I'm going to sit here and do job. But the mantra may change from time to time and circumstances. Nanda? Absolutely. That will be optimum circumstances. If the mother can say to the father, Oh, my husband, please sit beside me and recite the mantra for me. I'm too tired. I'm going to listen. And my child, our child is going to listen. And we'll all be illuminated by the energy that you put forth. Then the father must become the guru of the ashram. The mother has made him the guru. And by her leading from behind, the family makes decisions together. They all uh, uh, share together in, in the entire process of influencing and empowering their child. A wonderful suggestion. Nanda? <laughs> Namaste, Dan. Oh, it's very easy to tell you know when you've gone to the movies. You can tell when your mind is straying and roaming, and you can tell when you're just one with God. You know the difference. Uh, it's a priori knowledge. There's an intuitive cognition that you know when you're not straying and wandering and thinking of many thoughts. You know when you've got clarity and uh, uh, absorption. It, it's, it's very clear to us, Dan. Nanda? Question from Alfonso from Canada. Namaste, Alfonso. Many a time in the Hindu culture, baby boys are expected more than baby girls. Is this true or is it just a myth? 
It became true for some time. It is no longer true. It wasn't true in the beginning. It wasn't true uh, in the end. But in the middle, it became a custom. And that's because of the dowry system. And it became, a, uh, a, a, in the old times, uh, the, the kings used to give lavish presentations uh, to the new uh, husband. And it, they, they became anticipated uh, rather than just appreciated that the king was giving to show how much he loved his his daughter he would give lavish gifts to the boys who would take the the, the girls uh, and so uh, the the princes and the, and their their families had a, a wonderful way to start their econo the, the economics of their relationship well, as the custom grew in darker periods of time, it became a, 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 an anticipated uh, uh, event rather than just something that was that came from the heart of the king. So that in later times, uh, the families of the groom said to or it said to the the prospective bride's family how much will you give us and it became a barter it's very very quickly losing its its uh, uh, efficacy uh, and uh, it actually it's it's against the law now uh, to to ask uh, how much of a dowry one will get so it's becoming less and less important in the selection of a mate. But that's how it became. Nanda. <laughs> Namaste, Ravi. Namaste, Tejaswini. Ravi, there are many, many rhythms of pranayama, and we would recommend that the mother keep her rhythm very soft and not strenuous. Now, there is the method of one, 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 which means you inhale one mantra, you uh, retain one mantra, and you exhale one mantra. Very soft very gentle, very easy to employ. For example, Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Retain. Om Namah Shivaya. Exhale. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namah Shivaya. The classic rhythm of pranayama is one, four, Two, you inhale one mantra, you retain for four times, and you pronounce loudly as you exhale two times. Om Namah Shivaya. 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 Now, if for a pregnant mother, it should not be a strenuous exercise. She just wants to be consistent. So either of those two procedures would be recommended. Nanda? Anything that puts the mother into harmony will add to the divinity of the baby. If you do exercises for the body, for the mind or for the soul or for all three it ex it amplifies the divinity within the baby if you have satsang with yoga and if you do yoga with mantra it adds to the divinity of the baby 
It puts the mother into a harmony. It puts her body into a harmony. It gives her strength. It gives her poise. It gives her balance. And those qualities are communicated to the, to the fetus. So anything that puts the mother in, into a harmony and takes her body, her mind, and her soul and puts them in, moves them or directs them towards Sanatan Dharma, this eternal ideal of perfection. All of that is recommended. Nanda? I think ceremony is done to worship the mother or ward off the evil life of the child. Both. Uh, we, when we worship the mother, we empower her, we give her greater inspiration and we give her strength and energy and show our appreciation and demonstrate uh, the sincerity of our conviction that she is the mother of God. And we g give her more encouragement to carry the burden of uh, being the mother of God and actually becoming the mother of God and becoming the divine mother. So, in this way, we ward off the evil eye. I mean, the evil eye is nothing more than my eye, my, my little eye, my eye of ahankar, my eye of egotism, of attachment, of, of demand. My way is evil to me or to my eye. And when I impose my eye upon my loving spouse who is carrying a divine child, then she has so much to, to manage that she loses control. Because she has her little eye saying, I'm not feeling good, I'm carrying this extra burden, I'm, my body is out of harmony, my... Um, my mind is telling me to stop this. I'm not enjoying this procedure. Uh, I feel to urinate quick, frequently. I feel to vomit quick, re, frequently. I feel uh, urges to eat things that I never had a desire to eat before. And I'm getting fatter and heavier and it's getting tiring to carry around this extra weight. Uh, she has enough going on in her life without my imposing my evil eye upon the mother who is going to be divine mother to our divine child. We want to communicate to her how divine she is and how balanced she is and how well she is handling this entire transformation in, that's going on in our lives and but most significantly in her life because now she has this new relationship with this new being inside her who is taking away her taking from her nourishment and she wants to maintain her balance. She wants to give only the good things. So she won't want to smoke. She won't want to drink. She won't want to put her mind in adverse circumstances. She wants to make a harmony and a balance and a, and a divine environment with which to nurture mother and father and child. Nanda? Namaste, Candice. Is there a benefit in playing the beautiful song from Mark Vidi to the fetus and for ourselves? Absolutely, Candice. It is, it, when we listen to Srimas singing and we get that melodic, haunting sound that just it puts us into this attitude of respect, this attitude of peace and comfort and it puts the fetus into that attitude of peace and comfort well then we 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 feel that we are empowering that fetus with with all the qualities that we want to nurture within the, our own children we want to give that child the best start that we possibly can we want to give that child the, the, the empower that child to be as divine as we possibly can. And Srima's music will put us in that attitude, in that equilibrium, in that harmony, in that 
bhava bhakti, in that attitude of devotion, which it causes us to go inside and be still and be, let our child be still and grow up with those still attitudes, those still qualities, the stillness and shanti. Just like the rishis grew up in that attitude of stillness, they were raised in this tradition. We want to impart those values to our children and there's no better time to start than when the fetus comes into the womb. Nanda? A question from Ramya. What yeah. is the best way to communicate to our extended family and friends about the need for the mother to be in harmony so that they don't disturb her? Oh, we can just uh, uh, tell them our philosophy and tell them the reasoning behind it, Rami, and explain to them, gee, you, I really believe that if mother is in harmony and in peace and in this beautiful nurturing environment which inspires divinity, that the child within her will grow up into that environment and in inculcate those attitudes. And so we are requesting everyone who comes to our ashram and joins us in our temple that they respect the sanctity of our temple and come to visit us in, with, with such a respectful attitude that you'll communicate to my child the, the, my value system. Please don't come to visit me to impose your value system. Please come to visit us in such a way as you inspire and promote our value system. And I believe that such a request could be respected and honored and it, it, you could inspire others to participate. Uh, GE, even if it's uh, unnatural for them or uncommon to them. I know that many visitors that come to the Devi Mandir for the first time, we say to them, uh, please remove your shoes before you enter into the temple. And many people scratch their heads and say, why? <laughs> And we say that it's an, it's an attitude of respect and it's a type of cleanliness and you're empowering the vibration of the temple to, to manifest its divinity to all those who come. So you, just please, for this one moment where you're coming into our environment, maintain the sanctity of our environment, please. And we met, meet with very little resistance. Many people just naturally take off their shoes and refrain from smoking and refrain from loud, obnoxious conversation and etc., 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 because we explain to them our necessity to live in this kind of environment. And I'm sure that mother and father could very easily say to their extended family, Please, my dear extended family, we love you and we welcome you, but this is the attitude and these are the vibrations that we're trying to express and encourage and promote in our environment. Please, maintain the sanctity of our environment. Om Sam Saraswati Namaha Namaste.